at the Alameda County Fair on the 4th of July. I'm Schmitty, that's Cheryl, and you're listening to Talkin' Schmidt. Today on the program, San Francisco legend motherfuckers, Rick Ibaceta. Thank me, thank everything, thank skateboarding. Hope you're safe. Hope you enjoy the show. It's a fucking good one. Two hours of San Francisco history. McKenny, I ain't stopping. Don't worry, dude. Quit <laughs> calling me and saying, don't quit, bro. Don't quit. We're going to 200 at least. Peace. Head on down to your local shop. Ask Blood Wizard Skateboards. Or visit BloodWizard.com. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden, and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. All right, hey, this is Ricky Bissetta, Um, and you're listening to Talking Schmidt. Holy cannoli. It's cool, like tonight is the night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big dog's in. Do we really want to be here? Oh, everything changed. We on? Schmitty? Talking Schmidt. Talking Schmidt, dude. <laughs> you gonna come out different. You <laughs> shit my pants, man. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. Holy shit. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. What's up? Come on, Schmitty. What the fuck? Tell the skateboard police to come get me. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yeah! Check this out. I was going through some past back issues and I read this little thing and it says at a mean 17, my next guest prefers the finer things in life. Led (laughs) Zeppelin, ACDC, the bad brains and motorhead. Wow. This is Rick (laughs) Ibiceta. What's up, dude? (laughs) That was me back then, you know? You were right next to Lance Dawes, dude. It's insane. <laughs> There's Lance is doing like a crayon block. There's like the photos were epic. Yeah, Max Smith photo that you sent me, uh, that you posted earlier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. How's it been going? Oh, everything's good, dude. Married for like 20 years now. You know what I mean? In spell. College. Everything's going good. All right, where yeah. are you living? pretty healthy um we moved out of the city almost two years ago i live up in the hills of richmond oh sick okay yeah east bay you ever go visit stabas pizzeria i've been there once and i've oh. ran into them at a couple of restaurants out here uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay shoot i was talking to uh mike carroll earlier today and he was Ooh. throwing me all kinds of little nuggets so i'm uh- stoked to fucking dive into some shit Wow, dude, Mike and I go back. Yeah, he was saying that. Um, well, uh, before I tell you what he said, do you remember like the earliest memory of meeting him? So, Mike lived up in Daly City, up in there's this place called Westlake, right? And there's a photo mat there, and it was knocked out, right? Yeah, I, I skate with this crew that I went to, um. For one year, I went to Ben Franklin in Daly City. Uh. It was the seventh grade. And and that's when I kind of like really got into skating, you know, like little little metalhead, little rocker got into Uh. skating. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And we'd skate the photo mat there, try rail slides, whatever. And Mike would call us Westlake nerds. You know, (laughs) they were like the cool dudes, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. But. Um, yeah, I think that's probably like one of the first times I met him. Maybe at, at uh, West Orange Boys Club, fucking jump ramp jams. I don't know mm. if you remember those, but oh yeah, he 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 actually said that he met you at uh, the abandoned photo mat in Westlake, and, you, <laughs> and, and, and and you guys didn't know each other, and then later you figured it out when you got to meet each other. Yeah, that's like, where were did you where did you grow up? I grew up in the city, but we moved to Daly City for like a year or two. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I was born okay. in Philippines, but I grew oh. up in, yeah. What part of the city? 
um, Excelsior and the Sunset. Oh, okay. Yeah. Six. What schools were you going to? Oh, uh, I went to APG and any first railing we ever did was at APG and any Lincoln. Hi. Yeah. James to James Lick Clipper Ledge. I used to sit under that ledge. Dude. It was pretty crazy back then. Sixth grade. That's pretty wild. Did Coco have a photo in front of James Lick? Other side. Yeah. yeah. On the 25th Street side. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Coco, Coco and I go back too. Like right. even with before Mike. Oh, you knew him for earlier? Yeah. When, when did you meet Coco? Did you meet him in New York? No. Uh, Coco's grandma lived out here, so he would spend summers out here. Okay. You know, and he'd come out here and he'd skate, and he was, um, they were like the little Glen Park crew. Coco, Jim Vitez, um, uh, some other heads, and we, we all would skate Golden Gate Park and Embarcadero before it was EMB. But it was already an established skate spot because Gons had already skated in Thrasher, right? And that was the place to cut school and skate. There would be other kids there doing the same thing you were doing. Yeah. Coco was always good. He was always the fucking ripper. He was already, I couldn't even drop in at HP yet. He was already doing rock and rolls and backside airs. He actually taught me how to drop in at HP Rap. And he had the fire, right? Like he was so possessed to skate. Like he was the definition of that in my mind. Like he was always charging. Insane. I heard a rumor that he was credited with bringing the slappy to the East Coast. (laughs) 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 We will talk about Jake in a bit, but he definitely was one of Jake's dudes. Like, I mean, the the trip they went on, I think it was either the first or second Thrasher video is just the Coco demolish demo like everywhere they go it's just coco coco sprinkles of everybody coco 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 it's, yeah yeah i seen him put a whole orange in his mouth one day when we we're <laughs> kids sitting in the, in the back of our friend's car coming from like the dish or something but he had a whole orange i don't even know how he got it out but, oh fuck like, um well how did skateboarding start for you what were you doing that like before oh. skateboarding and then all of a sudden it clicked where it was like this is my deal so my earliest skateboard memory my um my older brother and his friends would skate but there was this hill by our house and i remember going down it on my butt and scraping my whole face up <laughs> and i got up and kept doing it <laughs> and then uh and i didn't touch a skateboard for a long time after that but then um like my uncle gave me like 20 bucks or something. And I bought a little fiberglass from a uh, big five when I was down in LA mm. and I was probably like 11 or something, whatever. And then uh seventh grade, I guess bones brigade video show came out and there was like, I was just like, Whoa, look at all these boards are like a lot bigger. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. They- accessories on there. I'm like what's up with this kid plate? You know what I mean? Like, all that stuff. And, and then, you know, my, my dad bought me a Lucero. Uh, I was like, Oh, I want this one with the, uh, with the, uh, the Joker on it. Uh huh. want that one. So we went into, I don't even remember where either skates on hate or some bike shop or something. There was a bike shop on, on mission street that had a, a, a little skate. It was called Borelli's right on mission in Santa Rosa. We might have went to Fogtown. I can't remember, but because um, I remember when we asked for it, they didn't have it anymore. And he was they're like, yeah, it's right here. He went to a different company. This is the Schmidt Sticks one. I was like, what? Am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. Not that one. You know what I mean? With the eyes. And stuff. OK. Yeah. And huh. like, I think Indies and Black OJs. That was my first setup. And were you, what were you in like grammar school? Uh-uh. Junior high? Oh, uh, probably sixth grade. Sixth grade? Sixth, seventh grade. Yeah. Did sixth you grade. did you have like a little crew at school or were you more skating with your neighbors? Uh, it wasn't until that summer when we moved um back to the city in the in the uh in the sunset where I started school at APG and Nini. And um my sister went to McAteer. 
And oh. I actually went to school with Mickey and Orb and those guys. Really? Isn't that crazy? Mickey Ray's and those guys? Like, yeah. Um, but anyway, they were older though, right? Or yeah, they're uh probably four years older or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so I was in uh maybe eighth grade, they were maybe in I don't know, eleventh or something, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. We ended up having a little skate crew in the sunset. My friend Ben Moody, uh Sean Barango, his little brother Jason, and my friend Geronimo, who was like my age, and we went to school together and actually showed me Miley. I was like, hey, there's these quarter pipes on the roof, but it's on a cliff and you can fall off if your board can shoot. I was like, what? Where is this place? Let's go. And it was adventure time. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. up and we were up there at Miley and there it was, banks. And you could fall off the edge because there, no, uh, there was no railings yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was rad. Yeah, Tommy and- had the cover without the railing. That's right. I got introduced to hills and just what SF had to offer and, and as far as skating, you know what I mean? And it was just bombing hills and trying to ride banks and yeah, that was it. And then uh, how did we like, yeah, we started skating Golden Gate Park basically and that's how we started meeting Greg Carroll and Mike Carroll and then uh, but there was another city crew, you know what I mean? Like CBS, Bryce, and them. Well, there. This was like the kids from the Richmond: Javante, Phil Chin, oh, you know, uh, Stuart Way, who was who was the man, you know what I mean? And Phil he had was the ramp, right? Yeah, Phil was untouchable. Phil was sick at casting ponds. He ripped. God dang. Yeah. Did uh, you know uh, what's his name? Sean Fleming. Um, didn't know him too well, but I knew of him, right? He, he went to my school for a year. He, he came to Redwood right. City and went to our high school. Oh, that's dope. Did you ever used to skate cappuccino? Yeah, for Ooh. sure. That was the first pool <laughs> I ever skated. Dude, it's so crazy. I skated the Oakwood Apartments pool at Lake Merced. Oh, shit. That was gnarly. And it had just been uh, sandblasted, so it was super rough, but we were charging it. We were in high school at the time. That's pretty crazy. Did you skate Jungle Bowl at all? Uh, no, that was um, before. That yeah. was way before. Uh, what else was going on in the city at that time? Shred of Dignity. There was all <laughs> these little crews like that would set up ramps. They set up these quarter pipes at uh, DMV. Uh-huh. Dude, the size of the fence at dmv <laughs> like a full-on seven foot quarter pipe they'd wheel it to dmv the jump ramps bryce would always have a jump ramp he'd always have that mm. you know what I mean? and then like actually what i was talking about was, was how we all became like this little crew was there was a contest in san francisco like um uh it was held by orange crush do you know it we were already friends the with- drink the drink no way so it was qualifiers at the panhandle right and only three people could qualify so it was pretty it was pretty wild and and we all skated in it but the people who qualified was mike carroll Stuart way and i forgot who the other guy was and then like in the sponsor division ray barbie uh eric hilton t-bone and uh uh, I forget who else, but it was it was a crazy one, and and the the finals was held inside the Gra- uh, Bill Graham Theater. No way! At Civic Center, inside the oh, theater, sh- and there was like a huge front side wall ride. It was built for Mike, and Mike won the whole thing. And then after that, we we were all friends. Like we were skating with Stuart, we were skating with like Phil, and yeah, it was cool. It was like a big ass city crew, and then we'd end up. We'd always go to Embarcadero and there was always there was there was like some other crew from the mission, you know what I mean? That was like uh Fat John, Chris Micro, uh Gary G Man, uh Abner, those guys, they were like the other kids from from like the mission skating, outer mission. Chico skated with them back in the day. Oh okay. you know, from like I don't know, I think they lived over close to where Balboa is and stuff. Mm. 
Yeah. But then we'd all end up either at Golden Gate Park or at Embarcadero and it would be a fat ass jam every time. And right. James is already there. <laughs> For real. James had a little crew of, of like Ollie guys. Like they were, the, the, I think they were called Team Snap. That was like their little, they, all, they could all Ollie up the stage. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. James said to remind you of a time he was, he, he, you guys were going to Wait, EMB. Are you homework, Schmitty? This guy did his research. Yeah, I like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but James told me he, what time you guys were skating, I think, to EMB, and you just kick flipped over the bump to uh, Fire Hydra. And he was like, in his mind, like that, he was like, ask him if he remembers that. That was this <laughs> shit. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of used to know how to skate, huh? <laughs> uh, what was the, so did you get into it when Concrete Jungle was there or was it Fog Down? No, Mike was the last sponsored guy uh, for Concrete Jungle. He was the last guy they sponsored. Oh, really? And, and he was already like on FTC. He's like, oh, I'm here. I'm on Concrete Jungle boards. Was it a rivalry or was it a brotherhood? Like there are two shops. It was kind of seems weird. FTC was a small corner shop. Fogtown Concrete Jungle was the SF shop. There was a rival shop down the street, but nobody cared. You know what I mean? Like that was like, oh fuck, need to get over on some art. Let's go, let's go down the street. But I don't know. But just dumb kid shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was all, I mean, Jake worked. Always. Jake, Jake was in there. I was a little kid and all my friends terrified to go in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? All my friends called him Jake, the man at the world snake. But mad at was, the world. Great. He was always cool to me. Gave everybody else shit, dude. Me and Mike Carroll, he didn't, he didn't like, like he loved Mike. You know what I mean? It was, it was cool. T- to the day he died, he, yeah. Mike was pretty much his, one of his favorites for sure. Dude, yeah. It was always special to see when Mike was coming up, you would just see Jake kind of turn into like a little softer version of himself. <laughs> he just be like he he liked Mike a lot. And Mesa too. You know, big love for those guys. Yeah. Yeah. But, so you love the uh, punky jungle, Greg would ha- get heckled. <laughs> really? So was your first free thing from FTC? Was that your first? Yeah. Yeah. Can't you say um Give us one pair of shoes a month, grip tape and bolts for free, bearings for like six bucks or something, a board a month that he cut, uh, that he had made. We can get that or one uh, production board a month. And, and I forget what else, but yeah, he took us to all the contests. Yeah, that was my first free thing. My second one was I was coming home from school. I think I was 16 years old. There's a box. Like, I'm like, whoa, what's that? You know, I don't come off from school, like shitty day, whatever. Uh Box. And it's got fucking deluxe and beware and Thrasher comic stickers like splattered all over it. And I'm just like, what is that? Like opened it up and it was just like Spitfires, Thunder, Super Kush, like all this stuff. It was from Shrugi. Oh, sick. Dude, I got this box. I was just like, whoa. Yeah, it was sick. It was like the early Spitfires, you know what I mean? Like like when uh, they first came out. Yeah, when they first came out. We thought, like, Cochran used to show up at Stewart's Ramp. Like, like Stewart's Ramp. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm fucking rambling in all different places here. But oh, it's good. When Stewart had a vert ramp mm-hmm. and people were flying off into... The Presidio, the little creek right there, and they thought it was a hazard, you know. And I mean, and we're like, we're like, Stuart, let's cut this ramp down, you know, and let's cut it down. Like, no one's getting vert, like mini ramps to shit, you know what I mean? Like, and we fucking cut that shit down from eight to six or to five and a half, and dude, people started showing up. <laughs> dude, that's where we first saw Sarge. That's where we first saw Tom Pia. Shout out. Oh, Eric damn. Dressen. Shout out. Sean Martin. Shout out. Uh, Ron Cameron and Sam Cunningham did Pivot to Fakies. Never seen them before. No way. Uh, actually, Ron Cameron did the Pivot to Fakie and Sam Cunningham did the, he called it Certain Death. 50 50 came come back in fakie, okay. just like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, and Salad, Salad Grind, Eric Dressen. Yep. You saw him do it there. 
And of course, fucking T and Mickey and those guys would show up and right. just kill it. Was Tommy on your radar pretty instantly, like being yeah. from the city and everything? What? That dude ollied that bush and changed our whole world. <laughs> right? Like future primitive. Like when we saw that, we're like, fucking anything is possible. Yeah. I mean, See, him coming out of his door, closing his door, and yeah. then that part starting. For, from my perspective, I'm in the peninsula, so I'm young and I don't really know the city, but I can't I can't imagine you being in the city like and seeing it. You remember that AJ Scratch walked by? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the back of the starter. <laughs> um, but like you probably knew some of the streets and some of the spots and like wanted to go check it out. Maybe like it. Did you wait? We, I know where that is. Thanks for Chan. <laughs> we did that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, that's all we did. We um, the transfer, right? Hop on the bus, get a transfer. We're going up and down at least three times. If the bus oh. travels, we're going down for five. Backside we, ninth. Yeah, we did bad. Joey and Nick, we we're, we're in probably ninth grade. I met Nick in ninth grade. He was in a group home at the time, but his dad had a house on ninth, on ninth oh. Ave. So that was it. We were just bombing we're okay. bombing that's what we're meant to do i guess you know what i mean but um we'd like be coming home to joe's house and we would just skip a stop and we'd always take it all the way to the top and skate back so down, and bomb down every time rain like it we'd get up there and it'd be super misty and foggy and we're like fuck it i'm not walking like see ya well we just go down the hill you know what i mean like who are some of the dudes that like we're always in the forefront of that. Like, were you friends with Noah that by then or not? Hell yet? yeah. No school. Yeah. Noah. Shout out. P2, Noah. I mean, these are just some people I know. Like, so there's other people way before us. You know what I mean? Those, the dudes who found that hill did that shit. You know what no, I mean? No, but that you would skate with. Um, Nick, Joey, Coco. Shout out. Who else would come flying down that hill with a shrewgy? Whoever came into the city, they, we, send them home with some beef jerky on their arm or, or their leg you know what i mean but that's how it was you know what yeah. I mean? we, we, we'd skate down the hills and uh safeway right uh-huh safeway that that was a spot yeah hop on the 37 bomb corbett mob of people end up at safeway and we just skate there all night it was crazy how early on was that China Banks photo where you're rolling in? I was probably 16 in that photo. Really? Yeah. Um, so that's pretty young. Uh, I was to Tobin shot it, right? I was sponsored by Shut at that time. Okay. Um, so that's like late 80s. So there, yeah, it was probably 1989, 88, maybe. But, you know, Kentucada, Camden. Yeah. Yep. I'm um, sure Arco, Danny, yep. Ferdinand, they all rolled in. You know what I mean? That's like rolling in China Banks is like carving the bench. You know what I mean? You got to you gotta do it. I mean, I can't roll in anymore, but I'll, I'll carve the bench every time I, I go there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They're talking about taking it down, so you won't have many chances left to do it. But. I got a little uh, film on it coming out next week. Brad. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's like 30 minutes, kind of historical Arco and fucking bunch Arco of people. found it, right? Yeah, he he said because he was living up on, I think, Bush and Pine or something. Yeah. And he cruised down. But well, we got Julian and Cardiel and a bunch yeah. of dudes. It's pretty rad. I'm stoked on it. That's yeah, awesome. but, uh, Tobin sent me a bunch of shit, too. So I got that photo of you and uh Danny. That was my first photo in, in the magazine or full page photo in the magazine. It That's was. That. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. How did you get hooked, affiliated with Shut? They were out in New York, right? Coco. Ah. And Danny Sargent. Danny was on Shut? No, Danny went out to an NSA, uh, ESA contest that they had at Tompkins Square Park. And I'd already been skating with Danny and he was like, Skating for Schmidt Sticks and uh, Barker came out here with Mark Podersky. You know Mark Podersky? 
uh, no. PA, the Chief Skates uh, local. Um, and this guy Todd, and they came out here, and this was like, I think Barker was just getting on Brand X. You know, oh, like shit. Toxic and Brand X. And he skated with Sean Miller and all those dudes. But he came out to San Francisco with those three guys, and Coco and I met them because they, Coco was like, I know this guy from somewhere, but they knew each other from skating ESA contests in the, in the East Coast. And then we, we took them around all over the city skating. Mm. Hey, yeah. Did Rod, was Rod Smith? Rod? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 not out here. No. No. Okay. Um, I, it was like one of those things. I just got a box at home one day and it was <laughs> shut boards and they were all spray painted and rad looking. Right. Yeah, it was pretty sick. Yeah, that seemed like a really cool thing. Sheffy was affiliated with it, right? They all were. But I think, um, um, yeah, I would call those dudes. Like, I'd be collect calling New York to, to talk to those guys, get boards, and just see what they were doing out there. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, like, I would talk to, like, Obed Rios and just a bunch of dudes who were whoever was in the shop what was your first new york experience jeff pang's sister was living in malibu and he's like hey my sister moved back to new york you want to um help me drive the car back i'm like sure he's like only thing is i don't know how to drive stick I'm like, <laughs> oh, you can learn i'll meet you in la you know you know meet you down at a at new deal or something you know what i mean like so I was like, hey, Julian, like talking to Julian, I was like, you want to drive to New York with me and Jeff? And he's like, fuck yeah. So like, all right. So we just got to meet him down in L.A. So Jeff figures out the five speed, meets us down there and me and Julian jump in the car with him, pick up Randy Colvin. Down in, um, <laughs> Arizona? In, in, yeah, in Phoenix. <laughs> and we ended up staying there for like a week and a half and shit, just skating uh oh, what did we skate there that i always want to the high ally banks oh yeah the little transit they kind of look like tennis court banks but but it was like arizona's version and you could lip slide them so it was, it was pretty cool but yeah we drove jeff's sister's car from from la to new york city stopping along all stopping in all these places no skating way. yeah met like some all kinds of people, man. Nate Lyons from Illinois and went to Chicago, met up with like Stevie Dredd and those guys and back then. And, uh, and Gons was having a, an art show that night. Right. But we had like no place to stay. So we we're just like, dude, we're going to drive to New York. And Mark was like, I'm going with you guys. We're like, you have an art show. He's like, I don't care. Let's go. So we all jumped in the car, drove to New York. And that was my first New York experience. It was like straight into New York. Um, uh, what was the crazy part of it? Yeah, straight into Brooklyn. Oh, at nice. Jeff's house, like in, in Flatbush. Pretty crazy. And he like talked about this bagel place the whole time. It was a bagel place. I'm taking us to the bagel place. I'm taking us to this bagel place. So we're like morning come, walk over to the bagel place. It's fucking caution taped around fucking blood everywhere and like the owner got shot to death like that the night but we're just like all right Whoa. we're in new york like <laughs> crazy but yeah that was my first new york experience wait if we say so you went to new york with pang julian and gons for your first time and, and randy colvin shout out <laughs> yeah it was That's, insane that is fucking legendary jesus it, christ you skated so many rap places denver um just some wild stuff albuquerque yeah what era yeah, was new that? york when we got to new york that was probably 1992 like, like was mark on blind or was mark was wasn't on blind anymore i don't know who he was skating for oh, after blind yeah okay i don't remember who he was skating for but jeff julian and i were on uh underworld element and then yeah, we just stayed at Jeremy's house out there in New York and just skated New York. It was insane. And then I just kept going back. I ended up moving there. You Oh, you lived out there for a while? Yeah, yeah, about probably for like a year or two, maybe. 
Yeah, uh-huh. two years. Yeah, just go, kept going back and forth. It was all cement and marble and just street. You know what I mean? All new. Uh huh. It was amazing. Did and you I see could it? buy beer at 19 and nobody tripped because that was like, actually, that was one of my first ones too. Jeff told me to go in the, in the store and get a beer. And I was like, dude, I don't have ID. He's like, just go in there. And I grabbed two beers and the guy's like, want me to open that? I'm like, yeah. I walked out. I was like, I'm moving here. This is, this is where we're living. <laughs> <laughs> I always tripped when I first went to New York on the public transportation. I just feel like you can get anywhere there with those. Un- right. It was like, like amazing like i always kind of wish i've had that like fucking (laughs) transfers and you're anywhere yeah that's right is that did you see mark break his ankle i was there i was there not in new york but i was there at lockwood when he broke his ankle nose bone sliding the bench whoa Fence to get him out of there that was pretty crazy you had to hop a fence no, we had to cut the fence from the bottom so we could just like we could lift the fence up and he just slid under it. And were you guys just skating or was he filming or what? We we're all we we're just all skating. I think. I mean, I mean, I think there's footage of it. Was, who was like the people that would shoot photos with you? Who was Tobin? One of the early guys. Jake Rosenberg. Shout out. Ah, oh, Rosenberg. Jake Rosenberg. Tobin. Uh, Luke. Morford started, you know what I mean? But he would just shoot photos of, oh man, we went to Gabe Morford's first slideshow. That was fucking awesome. But yeah, Jake Rosenberg and Tobin were like, for me, with like the early ones. How did you meet Rosenberg? Because he's from Palo Alto. Javante. Oh, really? Yeah. Wonder how uh, Javante met him. I know he did the Think video, I'm right? To how I met Jake. But Jake probably through those guys were skate camp buddies i didn't i didn't go to any of the skate camps you know what i mean right like, like my, my parents couldn't afford skate camp <laughs> you can go fishing at lake merced while your friends are away <laughs> or whatever yeah uh, that makes sense because he met ternansky there and and carol probably through all that maybe yeah i know that he did the first think video yeah that was at Dogtown think video yeah he did the new deal video like he shot a lot of it Mm. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, um, Gabe slideshow, like, was that Marin? That was in Marin. It was. He wasn't even. He he was just like you know, just some kid taking photos. But we already knew them. Like those kids from Marin were fucking good at skating, dude. Yeah, those guys are different. <laughs> those guys can jump higher and Ray dude, Simmons. Ray, uh, what's the guy's name that skated for Tommy? Um, oh, Pia, Joel, right? Joel Rona. Oh, Joel Rona. Yep. Yeah. It was from up, up the Northwest. And Jeff uh, Pettit. 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 Shout out. Yeah. Those guys were, those guys were. And good. of course, oh. Pat Duffy. Of course. That was, <laughs> you know, I'm just you, a little Pat. Bro, just wait. So he had a slideshow and n- nobody really knew who, like, but no, he had but photos he, of the guys. And, and, Scott Thompson was friends with those guys, you know what I mean? Because they were friends with Stuart and all those guys. And Scott was part of that clique. Um, he owned uh, Mission, Sk- Mission Skate Shop, Scott Thompson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Javante, Scott, and I are in the back of the uh, Golden Gate Transit to go to, um, to Marin, right? And Scott fucking sparks up a joint in the back of the bus. And we're 14, 15 maybe, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the bus driver's like, what the fuck? Screeches in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge and lets us out. Oh, no way. Right. But there was a, there was a, we could just go on the sidewalk, like, we just like, get out. So we had to walk back to, <laughs> to the gate again, like the toll plaza. And yeah, Scott got us tickets to get back on the bus again. We made it to the slideshow, but that was pretty funny. How rad. Did you guys uh, go down to San Jose at all? Um, not until we met uh, Nick. So we met Nick. Nick Tersey? Tersey, yeah. Uh-huh. So when we met Nick, he was all about fish banks, Memorex, the wave. The wave, yep. Valco, whatever that was. Like just whatever other places. Fish banks, Memorex. All right, let's go. You know what I mean? Like So we hopped on Caltrain and we fucking skated Memorax, like pushed as hard as we can to try to clear that thing, but it was gnarly. Yeah. It was so rough. Um, 
skated the wave. That was pretty cool. I still had the fish ID banks there. Were sick. Fish it was banks so different. So hard to skate, and only um, Doug Smith can skate that thing. <laughs> Doug Smith, <laughs> I mean, some is... other people too, but but he skated it really good. Cab too, but did you get a crail there? That, uh, what? <laughs> you know what? I think Tobin has a. Carol was saying you might have got a crail at Fish Bakes. He said that was an early. I think I did. And he but... said maybe Cab was there shooting with Bryce or something. Too, no, or... no. You know, I don't know if Cab was there. I would remember that. Yeah. But I remember skating from the Caltrain station to De Anza, <laughs> and It was so far. And Nick was like, fuck, I'm hitchhiking. And yeah. we hitchhiked there and we, we skated. I don't know how we found all those spots. Like I think about like we went to Montague Banks and I have, I don't think I could get there now with bus bus to train and all the things we did. Like, and we didn't have iPhones and all that shit back then. From the, um, the Melbray bank to bar. Yeah. So the one that we grind the middle one and then there was a launch part. Yeah. The launch part, you could like, I don't know, drag your hand on the roof sometime or something, you know what I mean? But Nick's dad, Nick and Joe, we like, we did, we skated together. Their dad moved to Mildred. So that was like a whole another another thing. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Back down to Mildred. Did you skate Library Bank, South City? Yeah, Those Library. are sick with the little pyramids. Hell hole. I never skated Devil's Pit. Mm. But that was Cooksey's terrain. Yeah, my sister went to school with Chris Cook too. No way. Yeah. In Pacifica? Uh, my sister went to Westmore. I think she might have went to Westmore. Dude, we had to take the bus to, to Nick and Joey's house in Millibray one time. And we hopped on the wrong bus and we ended up at the <laughs> airport. Do you remember the ramp in the field? By the airport, like kind of San Bruno. Yeah, underneath all the wires. Yeah. Um, when you, we ended up at um, at the airport and we're in between the Millbrae exit and the other one. And we're like, dude, that's far. And Nick saw, I'm crossing 101. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, are you crazy? And it's me, Nick, Joey, Mike Carroll, and uh, it's probably somebody else. And Nick saw, I'm going. So he ran across 101. There's all kinds of cars. And we're just like, fuck it. And we ran across 101, do 10 lanes. <laughs> <laughs> We get across to the other side. It's a fucking marsh. You know what I mean? And we walked across it like fucking hip deep in water. Drugs. Until we found the street on the other side. Oh, fuck. It was gnarly. Like the stuff you would just go to get some food or. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Did you ever skate that gazebo that had banks around the whole thing? It was like a circle of wooden banks. No, it, that was in like uh, Foster City. No, never made I'm it. I'm pretty sure Mike and Henry showed up there one time. I bet, dude. Those two were always at battle, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, Coco, he had some a little animosity with uh with Mike. You know what I mean? Because Mike was so good. He's like, how could he be so good? <laughs> <laughs> but Coco was good too. It was <laughs> different, but fuck, man. You ever you ever see Coco now? No, I haven't. Last time I saw him was on, uh, man, it's been a couple of years. Uh-huh. I saw him was walking up 22nd. I yelled at him. He's like, Ricky. And that was it. You know nice. I mean? yeah. yeah. Him and uh, Eric J used to come to my, when we had the ramp in our backyard, they would, they would come at like 1130 at night and be like, turn the lights on. We're here. <laughs> we're like, uh, dude, when I was living in New York, the doorbell rings at three in the morning and who's down there we're we're um i'm staying at pete's house right um up in probably midtown look outside jake andy roy barry brown coco joey no way all alive at like three in the morning we're just like oh, crap they were like, come on in <laughs> it's gnarly Wow. Those Jake, guys are the best, man. Jake and Vicky were there when the power went out. I just remember that one, like all the crazy photos of them. Busted like, through the door and broke Larry Clark's rib. 
ended up <laughs> drinking again. <laughs> That's hilarious. What year was that? That dude didn't drink for like 10 years or something. And then those guys showed up and like, <laughs> They ended his house. I guess they're like trying to do like research for kids or something. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll have these guys stay at my house. Mickey, Cardiel, and whoever, some some other people in. Dude. <laughs> it went south. <laughs> they're running into the house for some reason. And and Larry was there and fucking door swung open and broke his rib or something. Oh man. He started drinking again that night. That's pretty crazy. Did you go straight from shut to a new deal? Yeah. How did that, that go? Yeah, and that was a hard one. Yeah. I thought I was like, I thought I was gonna ride for Schmidt sticks. Oh, because it was right at that. We did we didn't know what New Deal was. So I got this box. Um dude, it was crazy because like Rod and Bruno had just like sent me home from we were down at the uh the Del Mar Street um uh, pro contest where everyone turned pro where Julian like qualified and, and he skated in it and Chapman, Ron Chapman, Justin turned pro, Ed Templeton, all those dudes turned pro at that contest. But like me, Tobin and Javante took Amtrak to that contest. Oh, damn. And, like once we got there, we all split up because we all, I don't even know where Tobin went, but like I went with the shut guys, Javante went with the um, world guys, you know what I mean? And But yeah, we stayed down there and watched that whole thing go down and fucking, Buster Halterman ripping the vert ramp and I'm lucky. It was so sick. God damn. Gnarly. Like it was crazy. Like, oh, what was the thing? Kick flip backside grabs. Matt Hensley did it on the bank. Tommy flew over the fucking hip. It was gnarly. The apple dapple. It was rad. Yeah. Like Hensley was killing it though. Like it was it was insane. Oh, dude. When yeah. Hensley came onto the scene, it was just like it was truly hocus pocus. You were like, wait, this isn't real. Dude, our friend. Gus, I don't know if you know who Gus Duarte is, but he uh, passed away a couple of years ago. No. But he was going to Art Institute up here, and 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 he was from Newport Beach, and he was friends with Mark Gonzalez, and he was the the crazy guy in military school that Matt Hensley talks about. You know what I mean? Oh, both in there. No way. Gus was going to school up here. Me and Javante skated with Gus all the time. And then, like, he filmed us. He has all this footage of us. That book, um, I, was, I was there. I was there! That night or something. It was all Gus's photos of Mike Carroll at Embarcadero doing the air walk with the crazy fucking pan photos, Golden Gate Park, launch ramp days and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he brought Hensley up here one day. And we got to skate with Hensley and uh, Ray Simmons and all these people in, in Marin. And it was, it was fucking rad, dude. It was, it was awesome just being there. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. Just seeing like shit go down. Right. Where it was, when it was unheard of. I remember the no comply flip or the board, would, you would do the no comply and then the board would flip. And you're like, yeah. wait, how did it, your foot's not, huh? Like it yeah. just didn't make any sense. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Going from shut to new deal. Yeah, Danny was was out there and he had talked to those guys about me, I guess. And that's when the board showed up at my house. Oh, you know but you I mean? thought it was Schmidt sticks. Um, yeah, but I opened it. It was just like a Siamese board, the New Deal, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, uh, I don't even know what other boards was there. Maybe like a Howl and the Templeton or something. And, mm. and I was just like, whoa. And, but we had uh, the um, this footage we had filmed ended up in the promo video and i was just like oh shit i'm in a video i'm in a video sure. i'm in a video Word. Flip the BET and you can see me boogie. crazy and then from then on it just fucking started happening super fast and wow. it goes quick <laughs> so you were part of the original new deal yeah and um, was there some weirdness like some of the people on Schmidt sticks that didn't come over versus the people that did like, I don't know. I mean, BK, he didn't go. Right. Yeah. So there was probably some weirdness with him. I was just some kid, you know what I mean? Like they were sending boards to, but I'm sure there was, you know what I mean? Were you already tight with Sergeant? Yeah. I skated with Danny a lot. I skated okay. Stewart's ramp and like fucking whale curb and um, Safeway. Thank you.
And now, another first impression from Danny Sargent. When I moved back to San Francisco, I lived at Tommy's house. It was like the jump ramp days at Golden Gate Park. And I remember like little Mike Carroll and Javante and Stuart Way was there. He was like on their level, but he quit. But he was really good back then. And Rick Avicenna was kind of in the background. But I started noticing more and more like when the jump ramp days were done. And New Deal wanted me to get a kid from San Francisco on the team. So I was going to be Henry Sanchez or Rick Avicenna. So I guess Henry just got our reel, so I wanted Rick, and it worked out. I remember we went and met Paul Schmidt in San Jose with, he fucking sacked on a handrail and went to the hospital, that sucks. Yeah, he's always been awesome. I don't know why it always stands out to me, but we're at this tight mini ramp in the sunset, like with tight trannies, and I'd never seen it before, like, I mean, I'm sure I've seen a few more guys faking and stuff, but he did the front side people grind, fake E on the tight tranny, it was so dope. Yeah, man, we always been good friends, but yeah, Thrasher was our funnest times together because we used to always talk shit and I'd be like, he'd be like, whatever, Danny Parducci or whatever. I'd be like, Ricky Schroeder, Ricky Bobby, fucking Ricky Rose. Wait, that might have been before Rick Ross, but I don't know. Awesome skater, you know? I mean, you know, it's weird when people are like, oh, he was, or you were. It's like, you always are if you were. Like, you get older, it doesn't mean you're still not an awesome skater. But I love Rick. Yeah, boom. Yeah, there was all kinds of ramps in the city back then, right? Like Louis Grimm ramp. Yeah. Channel Street. Channel Street was gnarly. Ray Myers. South Park. Ray Myers, I got to skate once. And then uh, they shut it down because whoever threw the cigarette almost burnt his house down, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Dude, I forgot Schwinn, about you that. were there for, for the 50 50 at Everett, right? I was there for the front board. Front, Julian's front board, not Danny. Yeah, not Danny. Yeah. All right. Okay. But we went because so, okay. This is insane. Like I was friends with this guy Mike Alcantar, and he yeah. did the front side wall ride uh, ramp over. over. I think it was Mickey over on the couch. the couch. Yeah. It was like couch potatoes. That dude was but, gnarly, dude. Yeah, he's super, he was gnarly. He had great style. And, did you know? Uh, um, did you know Lucian and Danny Alvarez? Lucian. I forgot his last name, Lucian but they were like, no. no, not Lucian. Uh, these um, kids were from uh, South City and they were like super good. Danny was from. Uh, oh, yeah. Danny, he, we call them wannabe Tommy Guerrero because <laughs> he, he had his hair in a ponytail. He always rode TG boards. That's no, it. no, that wasn't him. It was somebody. Uh, Danny Alvarez was. He was oh, like, OK. He was like bionic dude. And oh, he OK. Could, like, just tweak shit on his board. Both those guys could fly off a jump ramp. It was insane. I, I'm thinking of somebody else. Yes, that's somebody else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so, dude, I ended up getting Ray Myers ramp. No way. <laughs> yeah. After that, we Ray we was went, cool, dude. Ray's Ray cool. was so cool. And then we went up and he and we tore it down and and brought it down to the peninsula and we had it for like a year or something. That's then, so rad. Yeah. But that day at uh, Everett, Julian front boarded. It was uh, Sick Boys. Yeah. Uh, Mike McIntyre and, and Mickey and Julian were trying to skate the rail at the same time also. Yeah, I remember. Uh, was, there, <laughs> did, did, was there a premiere for Sick Boys? I was trying to remember that. I think, yeah, I was there. You you were probably there too. You weren't? I don't think I was. I was confused because there was going off that I think uh, Mike McIntyre also filmed part of it too, right? That was like Santa Cruz, right? Like with yeah. Jaya, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. But there's footage of Mike Carroll at Miley. And I can't remember if they played that first before Sick Boys at the women's building over on 18th Street. Because oh, that's, that's, where, that's where they had the premiere. And then we all fucking skated 16th Street after that. It was fucking rad. Fuck. I don't think I'm pretty sure I would have remembered that. Yeah. Did you have anything in that? No, right? No, I was getting confused because I thought I saw like Mike was in uh, going off, but I thought they might have played it. And I, I was thinking he was like, they cut him out of sick boys or something. You know, oh, they cut Mike's part off. But I don't know if that's true or not. But. but Mike said you were one of the first friends in his crew to skate a rail. Dude, do I gotta do it? <laughs> well, Schmitty. Yeah, dude. <laughs> since, you, since you brought it up, bro, I gotta tell you. I was so good, bro. 
No, AP Giannini uh, went skating with Nick Terche for the first time. And I was like, hey, there's this thing in the in the yard. I kind of want to try and skate it. And he was like, what is it? I was like, that. And he's like, what is that? <laughs> he's like, that's a handrail. And then I fucking board slid it. I didn't cave, man. I ollied to it and board slid it. And I was just like, fuck, I, I could do it. Because we heard about it already. You know what I mean? Yeah. We saw photos of some people doing it, but it was still like, I don't know. I mean, did you board slide benches at first? And then oh, like, yeah. and then you were like, if I could do that, maybe I can do this. Or was there like an out ledge that you would get? Like, wh- where would you get like kind of the mindset that like, it I was no do- speed. It was like, no, sp- the one I went for was like, no speed, not so high, but I could just get enough speed to pop and slide down. And then we moved it up to the other one where there was more speed and we can, we can do a little more, you know, to it. And yeah. then, but Nick had told uh, Mike about this spot, you know what I mean? So he goes there. With, <laughs> I think he even went there with Javante and Jason Lee and like later on. And I think Jay Lee got into a, a backside 180 to back 50, 50 on it, but I don't know if he landed it. But oh, damn. On a rail, but this was back then. That's pretty gnarly. I, I my only claim to fame, I taught I, I taught Mike how to do the Ollie flip. <laughs> did you? That's my only claim to fame. But he did the kick flip, but I showed him the motion how to do the Ollie flip. Did you guys learn those on jump ramps? You guys were jump ramp kids for a while, right? That's all we saw, right? So, I mean, Mike's got a deep bag. <laughs> yeah, he like, does. You probably do too. What's your favorite? What was your favorite uh jump ramp move? Um just mass kick out, dude. Yeah, that was that was the one. Like the way Tommy did them too. That was one. I like judo airs, kick out judo airs. Beep, beep, those ones. I like yes. those a lot. I used to bug Camden, dude. Camden lived down the street. Camden was like a huge influence, dude. Like I'd see him skate everything. You know what I mean? Like I'd see him at HP and he's fucking flying. Oh see him yeah, art flying like. He could freestyle. Like, Dude, Camden does everything, you know. But he lived like four blocks away from me. He lived on uh like on 44th and uh Viceni. And he had a jump ramp. And Nick Terche and I would go down there and be like, Camden, could we skate your jump ramp? And he'd open up the door and let us skate a jump ramp. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was that was really cool. Yeah, everybody I remember Bryce would have it in his car. Like no matter where Bryce was, the jump ramp was also. Yeah. Then it was like ramp to wall. Then yeah, you know. that was a uh, animal chin, right? Yeah. All coming. It was. It was coming. There was no stopping it, dude. It was it's quick. Like, bro, we all got to get in and can tr- do what we can do, and then dude, get out of the way. <laughs> it's coming. Did you have to tell the shut guys that it was over, or was it kind of over when you went? <laughs> deal, dude. It was um. Concave. There's they still had the dish tri tail for shut, and they were just kept they wanted to keep going with that. And dude, upturned noses and and tails, and yeah, I was just like, they're out here, they're ready to do stuff for me. And dude, that was it. I had to call Rod and Bruno, I felt so bad. But dude, that, that's a tough one. Those guys, they 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 hooked me up hard. I was right. grateful, you know what I mean. Uh, and that's where you got, you turned pro on new deal. Uh, probably a year later. So they, what was it? Um, dude, my first trip high school, dude. And I was like, I dropped out of high school, left, uh, the 11th grade and new deal sent me a, a plane ticket to go to the East coast. So I go to the airport, Tommy Guerrero was there. And so is Jim Thibo. And I'm my first flight. To go skate is with Tommy Girl or Jim Thibault. No way. Like uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. You know what I mean? Like inner skate camp. And there's all these other East Coast skaters there. But we get there. And Andy Howell's there. Sal Barbier's there. Um, fuck, who am I forgetting? Chris Hall, Ellie Mills, Ali Asha. Um, uh, dude, I'm forgetting so many people, but... It was it was it was dope to kind of like meet like people from the East Coast and 
and just like just skate and see how they skated out there you know what I mean? right yeah it was it was awesome were you did you film with ed templeton uh, i actually i did actually him and christian klein came up here and filmed with me like yeah they came up and filmed. The camera was huge, bro. It was like <laughs> chest. I was like, what? <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> what was it like back then? What? Because I talked to Tommy and this was a little bit before then, but Tommy would be like, dude, when we made a trick, it was just move to the next. Like there was no like we, we want to do it better. Like he was like, Stacy would film us oh, and we'd land it and it was over. <laughs> yeah. Get it, we're out of here. Is that kind of the same thing? I think so. Yeah, it totally was. Yeah, there was a lot of things that, yeah, I never touched again or went went back to or something. You know what I mean? Like, dude, it was just progressing so fast. I and mean, it was insane. Yeah. You had to pick and choose or stay with what you liked. You know what I mean? Or, but that's that's how skating is, basically. Anyway, do what you like. There's no fucking rules. There's no right or wrong at skateboarding. Do you remember doing anything early on to, like... I remember hearing stories that like Nodis would use like one cell block uh, more in the front. So his tail would hit quicker. Smaller wheels in the back so you can turn faster. Yeah. Just different <laughs> things or like redrilling truck holes and, and, and reshaping boards. I that at Fog, at Concrete Jungle. That was the first time I saw it. And dude, Danny Sargent used to do no slides and his bolts will spin off because he was regular footed. Uh him and Noah would fucking drill the holes and change the whole fucking industry. Does that ring a bell? I remember they, w- I thought they would turn the, the front ones over the other way. So no. like, so the screw, the Phillips would be on the bottom and then the that nets. Was, would- that was like an Ollie gimmick helper. Okay. You know what I mean? Like that's but they like, redrilled the trucks. They redrilled the truck. So the bolt wouldn't spin off. No way. And this is how I'm remembering it, dude. I mean, it could be different somewhere else, but I'm totally remembering it this way. And it was, it was Noah drilling the hole at Concrete Jungle back so Danny's bolts wouldn't spin off. Whoa. And then I think Venture was the first one to actually pro- put it back, right? Production. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. Like, it, it, it happened here. They had to talk to everybody else to make it standard, but that's how it was. That's how fast skating was progressing, right? Like there was, dude, the new tricks are coming along. Our boards are falling apart during the trip. Like whatever, you know what I mean? I mean, I remember my rail rattling. That was part of it because we were jumping off stuff. You know what I mean? But You're right. I mean, this is something different. You know what I mean? We're learning sh- this shit as we go along. Nobody did Johnny Cash like us. I saw Ken and Mickey. Uh, reshaping wheels like making them more square more or more round or something and smaller kind of on the skinnier you know what i mean no way i'm that doing that in there what uh what was going pro like was it um a surprise or was it a build-up or like was there a party it was like the video part came out useless right useless wooden toys yep. and after that they're like you're next in line i'm like oh for what okay let's go let's do this and all of a sudden, I'm like flying. I'm going to like Europe and Asia and all these places, like back and forth skating. I'm just like, look, I was just trying to go to third period last week, like whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it was kind of kind of crazy. What was filming that video like? Was it like you got a deadline, or was it just filming? There was, in the- dude, all the stuff was probably like months half a year old before like the video even came out you know what i mean like i mean you gotta remember you're editing tape to tape yeah exactly. you're rewinding tape you're just dude it's pretty crazy your generation loss like going like <laughs> tape to tape and we edited that at paul's house deadlines are deadlines with steve douglas useless wooden toys oh shit yeah with two tape decks it was pretty crazy did anyone know what they were doing like had someone done it before uh well they had done the promo video before so they had some idea and they had they had made some uh schmidt videos before and they had the equipment so i assume they knew what they were doing 
So was that the video that's useless? And then what's the other one? Twelve eighty one. That was after useless one twice. That was after. Yeah. Okay. You're after. Two things. One is the front shove it back nose grind. Twelve eighty one. McKenny calls it the Ibiseta. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then stuff off, dude. That's how we started. <laughs> and then the other thing is, were you doing the barley grind before Donnie? Oh man, I don't know, dude. It was around. It's like, the, it's it was around really. the same time. I mean, I'm not. Gons did it. You know what I mean? It was in. Was it not in uh, video days? He did one in video days, but he went over. Right? He went over at the Glendale uh, parking garage with the metal beam. Ah. Uh, we Boom. But he did it like, like how you would do a over rotate feeble grind. You know what I mean? All the way over. Uh huh. Um, I don't know. We were all doing shit at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude, I call look, Okay. So when I was on that trip, I was telling you about in the East coast, Javante's down in uh, me and Javante, we skated together every day. That was like from like, end of eighth grade all the way up to like 24 whatever <laughs> you know what i mean did you oh, go to school with him no he went to uh washington i went to lincoln high oh, okay um, how, how did you meet him uh through stewart and all this stuff like uh, it, okay yeah yeah so he was in la with guy and rudy ah i'm on the east coast in in this is one summer dude um I, I call him up I'm like, hey what are you guys doing out there He's like, what are you guys doing out there? I was like, there's this kid, Chris Hawley, doing kid foot nose wheel. He's like, guy and them are trying that too. Like, we're all trying the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it was all happening at the same time, dude. It's it probably the fucking Rodney effect, right? Yeah. But, um, but it was, it was, it was coming, dude. It was, it was going. These dudes are, it was, it was gnarly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, Danny 50 50 in a handrail was like, I'm sure maybe. Nodis was doing it too or something, but it was like, it was all happening right around the same yeah. time. So what was that first board graphic? Oh, the tug, the tugboat in the bay. I was a fisherman. Yeah, that's what, it was all homage to it. Who drew it, Andy? Andy Howell drew it, yeah. Okay. We're trying to figure out like what graphic was, and so, but yeah, they did all that stuff. And did you pick the song for the 1281 part? That was my friend Matt. Yes, because this is cold, a, blue. cold blue. Like yeah. people, it seems like it's like the underground. Like I can't find cold blue. I have it. Uh, people ask me for it, and, but out of respect, out of my, like my friends who put that thing together, I can't just give it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything? I'm just not gonna put it out there. But that was a friend, and and so that's how it got. These guys I grew up skating in Barcadero with before the EMB. No way. All right. So there was before EMB, there was already people skating there, and then Matt, his name was Matt, Fat Matt, we called him. Uh, there was a, a crew of like Sam, this guy we call White Rabbit, Pete Shock, you know what I mean, like and uh, Mike Gonzalez Thunder, um, Dave Warkew, all the Sean Pod. They all skated on Barcadero. You know what I mean? We we're all skating there. But, um, dude, he, they, they had, when we were in high school, they had a band, uh, SPOP. It was the Skate Punks on Parole, right? That was their little band. Um, and that was the last I remembered. And then we're skating, and they're like, Matt raps now. We're like, what? Let's hear it. You know what I mean? And fucking blew us away, you know. And it was so sick. It was just like it was about San Francisco. It was it was like just detailed storytelling, you know. what I mean, the stuff you can relate to, mm -hmm. and um, or what they were saying to, like, like you could relate to the stuff he was saying because you recognized it. You could relate to it, you know what I mean, like the places he was singing and describing or whatever. Mm. But yeah, I was like, Hey dude, can I use this? He's like, yeah, for sure. I was like, Oh, it worked out. And it, it just flowed well with my skating, I guess how, how it happened. But I mean, I, I don't really think I did too many good tricks in that video, but I, I don't know. 
No, it went really well. It starts to pop like pimples, and it's quite sick. For me to spark these symbols, so what am I supposed to do? Give a shout out to you and your so-called crew like a lead is a real carpet bomb in this. My name remains anonymous. What was the EMB scene like for you? It seemed like you could kind of like, like you had your tech guys and you had like the, the fucking hash, like the f- more tranny, like you were friends with Julian and Coco, but you're also friends with Mike and Javante and those dudes and stuff like you kind of could go in between the crews and stuff. ATV, bro. ATV. <laughs> 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 what, what was you gotta Dude, share we skated. you know what i mean we skated everything i couldn't like i i love skating at embarcadero i loved getting there but i had I had bounce i had to just skate other shit too you know what i mean uh-huh whoever was down can go you know what i mean that's how it was for me and if somebody had somewhere that they wanted to go to fuck i'm down let's go uh-huh you know I mean? it was just all skating you know what i mean embarcadero was was insane like the shit that was going down but there was fucking a lot of just fucking focusing your board checking your checking your board whatever i gotta go yeah (laughs) were you there for any like was something stick out that like really was like next level or something that you were there for one of the sessions henry or mike or somebody doing something down the blocks or i don't know such a fog dude it's like uh, La- Lavar, you skate with Lavar, dude. I was there when Lavar was discovered, dude. Really? Fillmore Skate Camp, right? You heard of it? Phil, no. Okay, so one summer, maybe it was the summer of '88 or, or summer of '89. Papa Joe, Papa Unit Unity Hi-Fi, uh, these DJs, they ran a, a nonprofit for uh, at-risk youth, right? So let's fucking build a little skate park right here on Fillmore and, and, and Eddie. You know what I mean? At this abandoned lot next to the uh, OCP projects, right? That's kind of our blood bank. There's a mini ramp and there's all these kids that just want to learn how to skate. You know what I mean? It was rad. So we're skating and there's this little kid there who's wanting to learn how to skate. He wants to, he's been skating. You know what I mean? He wants to learn how to drop it. So this kid wants to learn how to drop in on the quarter pipe, like uh, uh, maybe like 20 feet away. He drops in, breaks his wrist, and it, everyone's all, ah! <laughs> like, his fucking wrist was a noodle. And, um, but then we're all on the mini ramp, and LeVar's up there, and he's like wanting to drop in. Like, dude, who is this kid? Like, he just wants to drop in. So he drops in and fucking makes it to the other side. Fakey hang up or like rock and roll. Fakey comes in so light, doesn't hang up, makes it. And he's like, ah, he just keeps doing it. Drop in, fakey rock, come back. Drop in, fakey rock, come back. That's what he just kept doing. They're like, hey, I forgot. Maybe his Noah was like, go down to Embarcadero. It was always like, go down to Embarcadero. (laughs) (laughs) That's basically what it was. Like, all right, yeah, yeah, go down to Embarcadero. (laughs) And he did in LeVar was amazing yeah he picked it up so fast and he was so good marcus was so good too dude lavar and marcus joey would tell me that he would wake up in the morning and walk out of his room lavar marcus and geese would be eating cereal in the living room because his dad let him in because they were like outside <laughs> waiting for Joey or something like that. You know what I mean? Like for yeah. stickers, for stickers. We throw stickers out at them. Like, <laughs> dude, they were so stoked on skating. You know what I mean? Marcus was fucking amazing. Fuck yeah. Dude, it was all, and they were all those little kids. You know what I mean? And LeVar was kind of like a unicorn. Like he was like always kind of elusive creature that was like you would hear more than you would see you'd be like oh yeah lavar did this it was gnarly some of this shit lavar felt like a feather you know what i mean he was so light he could do whatever he just get mm. right back up <laughs> so what happens with new deal that you guys start and how does underworld element all go into um so you guys are doing new deal and then you guys start uh underworld element one summer we went to europe and 
Hong Kong and Japan. I come. It was me, Andy Howell, and Justin Gerard. We went to. We did all these demos in in Europe. Dude, it was funny. Spain, Portugal, Greece, Switzerland, Austria. Um, we went. We went and did those demos, and um, then ended up in in uh, Japan and Hong Kong. Came back. After that trip, like Andy was like, dude, let's let's start something. Like, let's start a branch at a new deal. You know what I mean? So we kind of just brainstormed it and we were trying to he's like, um, there's this kid Jeff Pang in New York, and then there's you, there's Chris Hall, and then who else are we gonna get, right? And then Julian gets kicked off. Santa Monica or is no longer riding for Santa Monica airlines for SMA. Right. So uh, I was like, let's get Julian. So we call up Julian and he's like, all right. I was like, Hey Julian, you want to come to Atlanta with me? He's like, all right. So we flew out to Atlanta and we just brainstormed this whole company listening to the ghetto boys first album. You know what I mean? Oh, come on. <laughs> and then, come out with this and Andy's like underworld and then my last new deal board was drawn by Tim Lane you know what I mean and he was Mr. Element right that was his whole deal and I was like Tim um we're gonna start this company and I'm gonna call it underworld element and I want you to do graphics for it and stuff you know what I mean he's like all right cool whatever but then Andy had all these like graphics already laid out and stuff and yeah that's how we set it off and was it at first or was it out of? It was out of New Deal the whole time, you know what I mean? But but we um it was distributed by uh giant distribution, basically, right? And how long was that? Did that go for? Um 92 to I was on there until 93, maybe end of 93, something like that. Yeah. You guys did uh Sky Pager. That was the one, yeah. Sky Pager with Harold Hunter. Yeah, you got a shared part with Harold. Yeah. That's it. Dude, that kid, and, man. He's amazing. And Julian's part was pretty fucking amazing. Like, Not one flip trick. <laughs> How's that? You guys uh, go on tours and stuff? or We did... Um, we did mostly the South, which is pretty crazy, right? Like we Atlanta spent- to... Yeah, we did um, Florida to to Louisiana, maybe even Texas, if I remember correctly, but to Louisiana. And we were just doing demos down there in the heat. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> it was rad, though, you know what I mean? I remember we we ended up, and uh, somebody came up and, and reminded me this one time, but we had driven like all night to get to this demo in Baton Rouge, right? And we're like, fuck yeah, let's skate here. Sal's from here, right? I think that's for Sal's from here. Anyway. Yeah. But anyway, we're like, we get there at like, the demo's already going and we had been driving all night and then these dudes are fucking crushed, right? So I get out and I, just, I guess I just start skating and, and I skate with everybody and everyone just melted in the car, right? And then the skate shop owner guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, why isn't anybody skating? And I was just like, Oh, I don't know. Let me go see. <laughs> so I went over to the car. I jumped in the driver's seat and I floored it out of there. <laughs> and then the back was open and all our shit fell out. Oh. And, I, <laughs> and I had those dudes like throw them back in. I just drove off. And we're off to the next one. <laughs> those were the fucking days right there. Holy yeah. shit. Who would you room with? Who Who were you mostly hanging with in that era? During that time, it was um, Jeff Pang and Julian and Cardiel. Cardiel would always come down, you know what I mean? Like, we'd take trips down to L.A. or I'd go up, up there, get sacked, whatever. So did Underworld Element, did you see it? Like, was it changing? Like, it eventually becomes Element, right? It did. Did, yeah. you, did you see that coming or was that? 
Dude, to be honest, I was like, that was like one of the, they wanted to always call it element, right? At that time, I was just like, not even focused whatsoever. They're like, get some footage, all right? And like, I have the footage and I was watching some of it like recently and it was just, just drinking 40s and smoking bloods. And <laughs> it was like, oh, this is funny. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I knew it was like, oh, I'm not going to be here for that much longer. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. It yeah. seems like that's what goes down. Like, you know, for like, sure, dude. Once you start giving your own opinion <laughs> about stuff, <laughs> it's time to start a company. But, um, yeah. A partying takes over a lot of times, though. Like, it's like all of a sudden. In a way, I'm kind of glad, like, I fucking snapped out of it. You know what I mean? Like, was that in the same era that you got the cover? Yeah, March 93. That's me. You got the cover. You got it. I think Bryce and I shot that like a few months before that. You know what I mean? And then I got that cover in March. And then Tobin shot a photo of me and I got the cover of Trans World the next month, April. Oh. So we're this- back to back. Both Mag. Pay me fools. <laughs> Did you get any incentive or anything? No. And then after that, Mag came out, dude, I got kicked off. Like, Eddie Hell calls me up and was like, dude, we're going another direction. I was like, so we're just like that. Like, all right, cool. No yeah, way. That's it. Wait, did you were you like, yo, did you see the last two months covers? <laughs> <laughs> 93, that's me. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That dude, uh, shit happens, you know. But I was like ready to, like meeting like Jeff and Pete and them. I was like, ah, oh, this is what we're, this is what we want to do. You know what I mean? Let's do something else mm-hmm. and see if we can make something happen, right? Mm. So, yeah. After Underworld Element, Jeff and I flew out to Europe that summer. Like that's when we we did all the um. It was like a fucking hell ride trip, right? We were there with Jake. We were like, oh. we all went out there together and we we're uh, Joey and those guys were in, uh, with Jake in Madrid and we all met in Belgium. And then from then on, we just dropped, we were just going to all these cities like fucking Paris and Amsterdam and just, I got to, uh, I got to hang out with Paolo in Harrow in London. So Paulo had been stuck in London and we show up and we're like, hey, so we started skating and stuff. And then he was on stereo, I think. And then Dune and Jason were there too, right? So we were just traveling across the English channel, right? Like skating and stuff. And I ended up writing for stereo when we got back. Yeah, skated for stereo for a little bit. And I went on a trip with them up to Vancouver for Slam City. Oh. And then we came back and then I got a call from Jason. Like tried to he's trying to give me the talk. Like I was like, hey Jason, dude, it's totally mutual. Like he couldn't say it. Like that they wanted to go a different direction too. Right. I was like, oh, it's all good. You know what I mean? Damn. When those things happen, are is it just over? Like, is it like we're not friends anymore? Or that was the kind of that was like the weird like for some it is like that. Like it wasn't like that with with um with Dune and Jason, you know what I mean? It was just like, it was cool. That was like that one summer we skated and we kind of clicked, you know what I mean? And then, and then I was just like, uh, maybe not. Right. And then after that, you started uh, Cream, yeah? That's right. Almost skated for Zoo. But really? Then, yeah. Oh, with Pang? Yeah. But then we took Pang from Zoo and we started Cream. Oh. And then... Cream started in uh, 94, the winter of 94. And we were out of the experience and pure wheels camp over there. And we were on Minna Street in Fifth in a little alleyway. We had, there's a little warehouse there with a little ramp. Little ramp, yeah. Yeah, a little offset on it. Uh huh. Yeah. That was a wild one. There's footage of that ramp. People would have little clips on that ramp for sure. Yeah, there's one yeah. that just surfaced recently. Huh. Yeah. So that was that. We did that for two years. Drove out to like uh, Joey and I rented a town car and we drove to Tampa and that was fucking wild. Right? <laughs> <Okay>, we <laughs> Mike was on flow team. Like 
cream. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was in the car. He was like, he was, he was always in the car. Like uh-huh. uh, he even drove, he hopped in the town car with us and was going to drive to Tampa. Right. But he got off at, at Torrance. He got off at girl. <laughs> <laughs> we, we drove off me, Javante, Jeff Pang and Joey. We drove oh, okay. to Tampa pro. He's not. Yeah. And that was like the last time I saw Brian Schaefer until oh, really? a week or two weeks ago, I was at a wedding and, uh, and the, the, the guy on the mic, the MC, I was just like, damn, that guy looks just like Brian Schaefer. And he's talking and talking and talking. And then uh, Smythe is like, hey, Rick, you remember Brian Schaefer? I was like, oh, damn. Okay. You, what's up, dude? Yeah, it was pretty funny. Really? He was friends with the groom. With uh, You probably know him. He, he's from uh, Tampa also, uh, Craig. He's he's friends with, with Schaefer back in the day, like that. Was their, that was their little crew. Oh shit! Okay, but yeah, we drove out to Tampa Pro. We rented this town car, this Lincoln town car, from Sean Young's girlfriend. She's like, "Yeah, I work at this rental car." And we're like, "Oh, can, can we um, can we rent a car from you?" Like, "Yeah, I'll give it to you for um, economy." Oh, perfect. We want a town car, so they gave us this like champagne town car with with burgundy leather inside it with seven miles on it. I called perfect. We'll take it. <laughs> Got the car, picked up Joey, called Javante. He's getting kicked out of the house. He's I jumped in the car. Let's go. I picked up Mike, drove down to LA. And no Pang, yeah, Pang was in the car with us too. And yeah, fucking drove, drove that thing from here to LA, New Orleans, Tampa, Miami, up to New York and back. We put 11,000 miles on that thing. It had like an APB out on it. When we got back, they're like, we've been looking for this car for two weeks. <laughs> what was the highlight? Dude, skating uh, Miami, the drag boat roof. Uh, you know that one? I've never been there, but I Dude, know what you're talking we, about. We climbed up that thing and skated it. It was gnarly. It was, it was amazing. Um, what was another place we stopped? New Orleans. Like skating New Orleans is fun. Yeah. Oh man, New York. We just went. We just went psycho. I think Are we you... got the record driving back too from like New York, like back to California, because we we left at like Tuesday at at nine p.m. Drove a full tank each. Me, Javante, and Joey, full tank each. And we got to San Francisco Thursday at three. That was pretty <laughs> fast, right? Like like uh, almost a day and a half, three p.m. Just like the and dude we got that, lost, and you still oh, damn yeah that's fucking fast. Was that like dude sleeps then he wakes up and just drives no but oh, yeah. the car just keeps going. Yeah, so like I had just got done driving, and it was like Nebraska somewhere at like midnight, right? And I'm putting my head down, and Joey and Javante just scream, ah! ah! boom hit this thing and and we're and i get up and i'm like what the fuck was that and javante's like i hit a deer blood i'm like what (laughs) he's like i hit a deer i'm like we're still going he's like it was three of them on the road and i honked and i swerved i hit him with the uh with the side view on his side on the face he said i gave him i slapped him with the side view mirror oh my and we just kept going were you in pretty party mode in those days? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no regrets, really. You know what I mean? I did what I did to go yeah. in and contribute whatever, and I'm out. I'm going to step aside and let some other fools get some. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you got a long ride out of the whole thing, right? Like, uh, yeah. And then you worked at high speed. I did. And well, thanks to it- Jake, you know what I mean? Like, he brought you in. Jake. It was- <laughs> I started working with my friend for this cabinet builder, right? After, after this was like, and I'd hurt myself. I was like, fuck that. I like skating too much to be trying to hurt myself doing something other than, you know what I mean? Mm. So Joey's always go to the mag. I'm like, all right, so go to the mag. I'm walking in there and I see Jake in the back, you know what I mean? Where he's like in between, in between uh, Ed and Fausto's office, right? He's standing right there. He's all, Rick, like, what's up? He's like, do you want a job? I'm like, all right. 
you're hired. Go in there and talk to Evan. <laughs> I go in there and, and Evan's like, Roger Brown's leaving. I'm taking over Thrasher's um, slap um, advertising. And you can take over slap. You know what I mean? Like something like that. So I was like, all right, what do I do? He's like, yeah, we'll just talk on the phone. I'm like, cool, let's do this. So yeah, I did that for maybe two, a year and a half, two years. So you were working side by side with Evan? Eben's on the other side of the, uh, he taught me everything, dude. He, really? <laughs> he's on the other side of the uh, partition. And who's behind me talking shit? Danny Sargent typing <laughs> in like <laughs> orders. Dude, we couldn't get shit done, Schmidt. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was late every day for like 45 minutes for like a year. And like in and out of Fausto's and Ed's office. Like, what are you doing, dude? These guys are like, what are you really doing? Go home, come back tomorrow. You know, I, I, he must have fired me like six times and, and invited <laughs> me to work. He always was trying to find a little spot for me somewhere. You know, we love that guy. Yeah. And was KT there. was there too, right? KT was there and yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. What was, uh, you got any Fausto stories? What do you think, Colin? one time where he I was standing next to Mike Carroll and he was like, all we need is you and Mike. And that's what he, that's what he told us right there. He was like, that's all we need is you and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about? Also? <laughs> you know what I mean? Love that guy. Dude. Yeah. But yeah, he'd always just try to talk some sense into me. Like, try to get me going straight you know what i mean and and in a way it worked i just had to fucking step aside stay on my board but kind of just walk away from it like a little bit you know what i mean and that was like kind of like the best thing that happened to me well true or false you were gonna get a section in the mag called ask the captain <laughs> man i don't know dude <laughs> That would have been awesome. That's what but I the heard. I heard you were going to be. And that's Ruben, dude. Ruben <laughs> is the captain. So there's no way that would have been me. <laughs> so you kind of just bailed like you, you quit? Yeah. Uh, what did I do? I, Dude, when that was happening, uh, Fausto was like, I'm going to move you. He wanted us out of the building, dude. He was like, I'm going to move you, Danny, and somebody else down at Double Rock. We're gonna we're gonna have the warehouse the uh the the merch down there you know what I mean like when they moved yeah. it down there yeah I, like, I don't know you know what I mean like out of sight out of mind what's the yeah. city lunch is right here though well, <laughs> no, I'm, dude, just the worst. <laughs> I'm just kidding I got uh, food poison for oh, no you did yeah I didn't <laughs> mess with that place but at the same time, like I was seriously thinking about it. I was like, all right, do I want to be with these two? Like, we're just be doing the same shit we're doing all the time. And mm -hmm. Jake's all wanna go to Ecuador. I'm like, hell yeah. So I was like, dude, I'm not I'm not coming back to work. I'm going to Ecuador with these guys. You know what I mean? We're going to Peru and Ecuador. Oh yeah, you were on that. So trip, I hopped right? on that. I, I bought a plane ticket and dude. That uh, was, is that Peter that was, cover? was it that trip? Yep. Oh, that's a sick that one. trip. That trip is insane. When I look at the photo of the different types of people, like it was Jesse Piaz was on there. Uh, Jesse Mike ripped Carroll, it. And, but then you got like Hewitt, like there was all kinds of, it was an eclectic dude, group. That was, that was insane, dude. Cause everybody had their little, everybody had their little shine. You know what I mean? Cause we got yeah. some little things and it was amazing. I don't know. Have you been there? Have you been to Ecuador? I haven't been to Ecuador. Dude, so imagine um that park looks crusty. It was gnarly because they all they kept saying upland, 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 and we were too young. Like I was, I never made it to upland, and they're uh, like, it's like a replica of upland. Like, all uh, right, let's go. You know what I mean? And uh, in a way, the full pipe where you can launch out into the into yeah. the ball and the and going into the snake, and it was like kind of like from from what I saw in photos, but. But it was nothing like it, dude. It was gnarly. It was gnarly. There was a school down the street, and we skated down the streets of Quito. And we get to this school, and we talk to the security guard. He lets us in. And in the middle of the playground is a pill bowl. 
about seven feet deep with no guardrails, like little kids could have fallen in, like whatever. But it was a perfect bowl. And I think I have footage of it somewhere, but it was insane. And we got to skate that. And fucking Jesse ripped that. Peter Hewitt and Cardiel ripped it. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Richard Kirby. Dude, that dude. It was rad. Did Richard Baez go too? No. No, no, no. It was Jesse. Jesse. Sick. Sam Smythe was there his first trip. Shout out. Maybe Greg Carroll was there. Greg was there. Ended up in Machu Picchu. It was crazy. Was that one of your favorite trips? It had to be up there just because fucking Solomon was there. And so and I went on trips with Solomon. Like they they paired me and Solomon up, right? Uh-huh. And it was uh he was on real, I was on Underworld, and they, they flew us to London. And we were in London for like a month, just skating with all those dudes out there and Harrow. And we traveled around England in a little mini doing demos, dude. Like one of those little minis, cars. <laughs> it was rad. Like Solomon sitting in the back. Like, yeah. yeah, it was hilarious. Solomon's a big guy. No. <laughs> He's just like. Yeah, it was cool. How did that go down, though? Like if he's at real and you're at Underworld. So, uh, New Deal Distribution out of Harrow. They distributed real stuff, too. So, oh, I Rick and Solomon out here. And that's what we did. And we skated. Damn. Okay. So that was another good one. Yeah. What was one of your favorite places you traveled to? to like, what did you skate where that fucking stood out as like, holy shit, there was this one. Boston Hospital Banks. That's the one. I always hear, I, I never got there. Fuck. I heard P Stone always would tell me about that. Dude, Boston Hospital Banks. There was like these vents, these vents. If you launch, oh, you can, you can, I didn't launch over it, but we were like, that's possible. Ah. Give me your nose on that. That's possible. Rail slide, that's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. What else? Uh, Hong Kong at the harbor, there's these banks like Miley. And Julian had went there like a few months before me. And he was like, you got to go. You got to hop on the the, uh, the ferry across to Kowloon and there or something like that. And there's these banks on the water, like right along. And that's they were there. It was awesome. Uh. Uh, Houston banks in in London. These little also bank bricks was really rad. Uh, the sundial in Paris, you know, uh, the sun in Paris. We went, yeah, we went there. Yeah, that one, man, there's just so many, dude. It's uh-huh. in Orcas Island. Orcas, Orcas is rad. It's, it's gnarly. Favorite. It's my favorite. Um, I don't know why every skate park doesn't build like Orcas where there's tranny on the outside, so no matter what, you can always you hit tranny come and come back in. in. Yeah, yeah, it's like that's the one, yeah. Uh, what else? Casting ponds, dude. Mm. Casting ponds in China Banks. They just got drained like a couple months ago. Yeah. My sister sent me a text, dude. She's like, guess what? <laughs> you one up me, dude. She's like, look, <laughs> thought you'd like this. I'm like, thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Some guy got towed in by a scooter and was doing it from pond to pond. Tom Pia and Coco did it pushing. From pond to pond? Pond to pond, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Me, Coco, and Tom were all trying it one day. Pond to pond, you know what I mean? Ollie. And it was gnarly because there's those little eyelets. Yeah. I don't know if you know those where they tie the nets to. If mm. you land on that, your truck catches it and it's ass out. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't make it. Coco and Tom Pia made it. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, you never know when that place is going to get drained. And when it does, it's just like, choo, 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 choo. like, it's like, it goes viral. You could tell like the new kids, like when, when like the, the, the younger generation mm. show up, skate it. And it's not how we skated it because we always skated it from the top, drop mm. in, launch, come down. Mm-hmm. Everybody skating from the bottom, coming up and around. You know what I mean? It's pretty rough. Like it's, you need oh, softer it, wheels. And- Whatever, uh, whatever chlorine they put on that just gets on your skin and you slam on it. Mm. Whitehead, Julian, Arco, and Phil Chen. And of course, Tommy. Yeah. Those dudes killed it there. Fuck yeah. 
Now, Phil Chen was so sick there. I remember that, that's where I first saw him was like just blasting that thing. Yeah. They hit the, the, the hip. Yeah. Do you remember where you were for the earthquake? Yeah. I was sitting in my kitchen, in, in our kitchen on 40th and Uloa, uh, doing homework with my mom, right? And um, the ground started shaking and I was like, stop shaking the table. And my mom was like, I'm not. And we both ran <laughs> into the table. We're like, boom, we knew exactly what it was, right? So we're under the table, the glass, the big window in front of the house is just shaking. And my dad's fucking yelling, like, what the, what are you doing? Like, like yelling, like, cause he thinks I'm shaking the car. He's working under the car in the garage and he thinks I'm shaking it. Like I would do that. You know what I mean? Mm. But he gets out and he realizes what it is. And he said he got up out of the garage, looked at St. Gabriel's school across the street, and he said an asphalt wave went, went across the whole the whole yard. Just a wave. Fuck. And then um remember that spot, Julian's cracking an Ollie, that, like the, the that was either the day of or the day after. Yeah. Because um Gus and Javante, our friend Gus again, was dry was skating around together and they thought like they had a flat tire or something, but it wasn't, you know what I mean? There was an earthquake, but all those dudes, like, so all those dudes were down at, at uh, Fort Mason, but that photo of Julian's amazing, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, it says a lot, you know what I mean? Not just in like, Oh, what a rad trick, dude. It just says like, dude, we just got to keep moving. Mm. You know what I mean? We can't just be, can't dwell on we just got to fucking build and keep going dude and that's what that photo is all about mm. like you can see like the barricade julian's like i'm just gonna snap over it there's people in the background running around all crazy like oh, my house is on fire or something like that or yeah or, there's a huge crack on the ground like yeah dude it's just like such a rad photo no, right. you remember the fucking bridge collapse and the guy tried to jump his car over the yeah. gap. But that was it was insane. Dude, Joey skated to my house right after earthquake and we skated around uh, the sunset. And like, dude, we we um there's no t there's no power. I had a walkman with a speaker, external speak like a speaker on the side that you plugged in, and we were listening to the radio. The Bay Bridge fell down. The World Series is over. And, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, we're like, dude, the Bay Bridge fell down. We're like, no way. Like, we couldn't believe it. And then, and then we saw it was just a section. And, and Max um, Schaff told me a story, a crazy story about him, uh, about his dad um, after the quake. Like, he said he had just crossed the bridge and saw the fucking thing fall behind him. No way. He got out of the van and ran home to Oakland. <laughs> Remember that dude was stuck in good. there forever. And yeah. it was like the daily news would just be like, he's still alive, but he, we can't get to him. It was so gnarly. You know, my friend Mike had just driven the Cypress and watched it fucking crumble behind him in his rear view. It was gnarly. I like what you said, though, about that Julian photo, dude. It is so true because it, it applies to the, today as well, like with the pandemic and all these just kind of like overwhelming crazy situations that we've been going through they're like we got to just keep rolling like we yeah. got to keep we we got to keep going yeah, like dude, our friends sure. are dying fucking all this shit and it's just like but you got to just stay up and keep it going for real that's what I'm gonna say. i'll just tell you something i forgot what it was it had to be about gus dude Dude, I had some what? crazy adventures with that guy and Javante. Like, but anyway, he took us to. He's like, "Hey, you guys want to go down south, uh, down to LA, down to Newport?" And then I was like, "Like, yeah, let's go down there." He's like, "Oh, I was like, when do you want to leave tomorrow?" He's like, "Let's leave tonight." I'm like, "All right, let's leave tonight." We jump in his jeep, and we're driving. And Gus, like, dude, Gus is the only one with a license. Me and Javante didn't have licenses. You know, we we didn't know how to drive it. Uh -huh. like, we, San Jose, and he's like, man, I'm tired. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right. Bro. So we're like, he's napping in the car. Me and Javante are like, dude, slappies at the at the curb in the parking lot. <laughs> so he wakes up, get back in, drive down, down to L.A. But we got to skate like hell curb. 
Hell Curb down in in uh, Huntington. Uh-huh. But all these like Gon's iconic places, Car Wash, Huntington. And we skated all kinds of stuff. Like I remember going to Mark's house, and he's like, "Hey, you want to jump in my uh uh?" It was like a dune buggy, sand rail. And we took this thing into like the LA River. We we're driving <laughs> down like up and down the LA River. It's pretty crazy. But mm-hmm. um, dude, going back, like all the crazy shit you did, like not think about like dumb shit you did, like right. Coming back from that trip, like with Gus and Javante. Gus, we're we're like by Monterey, and he's like, I'm getting tired, but I don't want to stop. Do you know how to drive? I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to drive really. I don't have a license. I don't feel comfortable. And he's like, Well, I'll just put it on cruise control i was like yeah put it on cruise control and i'll hold on to the i'll hold on to the steering wheel while you take a nap <sighs> in the driver's seat so schmitty i fucking drove from like monterey to maybe just like uh by closer to like whatever santa cruz on the passenger seat like gus took a nap on cruise control on highway 101 or 101 or something oh. like but Javante was asleep in the back until I was like, hey, no, I'm getting tired. You drive. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah, we got away with a bunch of shit. Yeah, you look back and just go, yeah. Oof. Too stupid. What's up with Javante? You talked to him recently? Um, he texted me a little while ago. I, right. I, I'll him every now is and then. Is he in LA? Yeah, he lives down in LA. He's got his family down there. Yeah, dude. It was always like me and Tay drive down to LA, skate, whatever. It was, it was, it was awesome. It yeah, was like man. seeing him like progress to how he did it. You know what I mean? He, and tray flip, just everything he did was so smooth. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. just the progression. And I, I also learned tray flip before Javante. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Motherfucker. Is that, is that real? And then when I seen him do it, I was like, I quit. I'm never going to do that trick ever again. <laughs> we only heard about this trick right tray flip 360 kick flip right uh, so we knew jason lee could do him right we never seen it on purpose we go to a contest in hollister there's a kid who skated for ski for steve douglas i think his name was scott tall kid friends with jason adams i'm gonna ask him about him but okay. he could do tray flips on a joe lopes board so that was the first one that you saw in person um, that was probably the second because I seen Jason Lee do it in Santa Monica. Okay. At a con- I went to a contest in Santa Monica, like a lot, like I wasn't even sponsored by F- FTC yet, or anything. But I went because my cousin lives down in LA, and I used to spend summers down there. Uh. So like, and but he took me to like we went to a contest in Santa Monica, and this is the J- this is Jay Lee with the with the with the full on arm sling cast. Mm. Do you remember that Jay Lee Power Edge Jay Lee? <laughs> All right. So he had the full cast and he was doing fucking rad Ollie meat grabs off the jump ramp at this contest. And it was like a contest set up by, man, I don't know if I'm, if this, if this, if I'm getting my skate shops right, but uh, Renee's, I don't know if it was either Renee's or Rip City put it together. Okay. Maybe it was Renee's. Down, it was down at the beach, dude. And Gabriel was there. Gabriel Rodriguez was the fucking rippingest, dude. And oh. um, I'm sure Guy was there too, but Duck and John were there. And this is the first time I ever seen shove it, shove it, backflip, shove it. We didn't do that up here Uh huh. until later on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shove it, shove it came in, uh, but they were doing it down in LA. You know, I was like, what? That shit is dope. <laughs> and that, yeah, it was, yeah. And that was, but Gabriel first- was 360 early grab 360 in the whole fun box far fucking from here to like fucking however he was fucking ripping so hard it was insane and that's where you saw jay lee do the tray flip yeah coming back to hollister we stopped at the wave to rest right there and i'm like i gotta try this shit you know i'm gonna try it right here and me and javante got out of the um got out of my friend's square back nick was probably with us too whatever and i fucking learned tray flip right there no way. Ever. And Tay, uh, Javante learned varial flip. And that was it. And I came home, fucking saw Javante. Like, he was like, I got it. He's like, here it is. Boop. <laughs> so ran. Were you guys into the pressure flip or? Anti? I was. No? I was. 
Yeah, I wasn't into the pressure flip. I like that pop, dude. Pop. Yeah. I like scooping. Backside ollies. Scooping. Well, what do you got going these days? I'm just like taking some time off. I just quit my job, work on the house, do some freelance stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You still rolling around? I try to. It's been a minute, though. I got these right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Austin to ride. I got this little crazy. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Fucking evil beamer. And I got a fucking little homage. Oh, sick. Is that a real issue? Yeah. I ride bikes. Try to skate, dude. Okay. I want to build something. Like, Toad was over here. And he's like, we got to pour something here. Oh, yeah. Did he do your electrical? Uh, part of it. Oh, yeah, part of it. Yeah. Toad said not to tell you that you're his favorite skater. <laughs> <laughs> I love Toad, dude. I think that that's Schmidt. Toad fucking rips. Yeah, me and Toad are good friends. I love that's Toad. That's awesome. Too. Dude, there's a photo. Like, I remember going to Cardiel's house, and there's a photo of Cardiel launching over this guy on a VMX bike, and Cardiel's on a dirt a motorcycle. He's launching. I was like, who are you jumping over? He's like, that's Toad. I'm like, for real? No way. Toad's fully standing, holding on to a BM, like standing up with, next to his bike, and John's launching over him on a, on a dirt bike. They go back deep. I know. Grass Valley days. Remember the Cardiel made those wheels. They were called the Toads. I have the Daytons. Oh, really? I have the brand new Daytons in the wrapper, bro. That's sick. Do you hold on to some shit? I have the Terche Protect and Serves. You guys made that. Yeah. I, yeah, I got that. Did you ever get a wheel? Nah, man. I was. That was that was too new for me. No, you didn't get one of those flame heads like oh, I did. Did you? Yeah. I, I, I was in that little little that, booklet. Yeah, that was pretty sick. We always end with some uh a song that you want to choose. Um I know you were fucking a metal kid growing up. Maybe said <laughs> to pick your pick your brain about your metal days. Oh man. What was your first concert? Dude, I was just trying to figure that out and i think it was uh billy idol actually wow yeah i'm pretty Dude. sure it was billy idol at either the uh, it was a long time ago so i think it was at the cow palace but i'm not mine wondering. was at the cow palace and it was iron maiden power slave no way <laughs> that's so sick see i, I want to have something. was there i didn't know Mesa back then but he was at that show <laughs> we were talking about it Dude, Mazo went to so many sick shows. He he, he always hits me up. He's like, "Were you at this? Were you at that?" Like he's he was at some sick ones. Did you go Day on the Green? No, I, I never went to any of the Days on the Green. But my sister was there for some fucking rad shows on uh, Scorpions and not, I think not metal Van ones, Halen but like yeah, oh, like New Wave. Yeah, she went yep. to some rad ones with some fucking crazy crazy headliner. Do you remember the first record you bought? It was either Stray Cats or uh, Ride the Lightning. Either oh. Ride the Lightning or Kill Em All. One of those. Mine was Led Zeppelin 4. Who's all-time front man? Singer? Yeah, we're or, going Halford, Dio, Ozzy. I wish I could have seen Dio play, dude. Uh, King Diamond. Oh, man. King Diamond, bro. Are you on any new shit? Not really. My friend, uh, my old coworker Harry, he plays drums for Succumb. Oh, really? Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, he he played some drums in that um, metal movie recently, the the Sound of Metal, where the guy's hearing was going away. But he oh some, yeah, yeah. That movie was sick. We saw that. He's the one. I, I talk to to that guy about metal all the time because he does. Uh, uh, he sells shirts like metal shirts. They're super. Yeah. Did yeah. you get into punk at all, or were you mostly just? I rock? listened to it. I never really went to any. You any, never went to the shows. The uh, my the last show I can remember was probably at the Great American Music Hall, and it wasn't even that long ago. It's probably like fifteen years ago or something, or 10, 10, 15 years ago, and it was Drunk Engines. Oh, uh, sick! Vidados and uh, uh, somebody else. I forget. Yeah. Mofo. Yeah. I just talked to Mofo like over the weekend. He's the first person 
take me out to eat on a skate trip on a, on a little and it was it was it was me noah and sean martin and mofo took us out to eat no way was, we were just out skating me and mofo were stuck in the dungeon working together like downstairs in that one room and door closed the like, old dark room no in the middle like like where slap office was right next to slap oh okay and okay. we, and he would turn the lights off and burn sage and listen to like crazy war audiobooks and shit. Wow. Like it was, yeah. wow. Me and Mo got a lot of fucking we got a lot of hours. Yeah, dude. I had Danny sitting behind me and he was like, <laughs> Did you walk by KT's desk? I'm like, no. He's like, take a walk right now. <laughs> I remember getting a box of G-Shock watches. I was just like, no fucking way. I got 10 G-Shock watches. And so I looked up. Like, I, was, I, was like, Did they? I was like, they know because it's already at my desk. Like, I was looking around to see if anybody's seen it. I was just like, come, on, come up right now. I'm going to go lunch real quick. I came back from lunch. There was like one on my desk. And everybody else had it. Holy shit. I was... What's the craziest thing you got? Like, was that one of them? I, oh, I, like, when working there? Yeah, like, I got a snowboard. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I don't know, really. That was, yeah, that was uh, some of the things, but they still had twist grip when I was there. And just the pose was, was already going, but they still had the twist grip. Uh, but they okay. So when I started, we got Schwing. It was a golf magazine. Oh yeah, oh, I wasn't there anymore. And, and K, that was KT's side project. Whoa. It was insane. What's up with KT? Is he still up there? And in- he's in Santa Cruz somewhere. Okay. I need. I, I'm. I want to talk to him. I fucking miss that dude. Yeah. I've seen him at the uh, NHS. Had like a, a a anniversary party, and KT was there. That was. How's like, he doing? Oh. He's good. I think so. I think so. I don't do you know. remember? Do you remember back to the city? I missed the third one, dude. Jeff and yeah. I were both stuck in Europe, and we're like, "Fuck!" Everyone's skating the city, and that was the last one. That was the last back to the city in, at Civic Center in the fountain. Yeah, I skated yep. the second one. I didn't get to skate the first one. Mm. Um, but I during that Phil second got third, one, maybe. Do you remember the second one where KT was the announcer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Jake was right there naming off the trick so KT can ramble it. You know that was the switch right there, right? That was you know it. that's uh, what that's what that okay. Jake's the new editor of Thrasher, bro. That's this is this is it right here. That was it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. uh the story Jake told me was he was like working in shipping and he would come up with the magazine, be like, This is wrong, this is what the fuck. And Fausto was like, think you could do it better? And he's like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> they, I was like, all right. And the next thing you know, he's doing it. Dude, kids don't even know about getting their fucking hands dirty reading the, the mags. Oh, and the ink coming out. That was rad. That was <laughs> awesome. Because you know why? You can take a, you can take your little uh, tracing paper and, and like scratch it. And then the image would be on the other side. You're like, yeah. <laughs> How sick is it that Thrasher is still going and it's thicker than it's ever been and there's no it's magazines amazing. anywhere? It's amazing. It's so crazy. It's like you go to the airport and not even like Sports Illustrated, nothing. It, and it's Thrasher is like 300 pages or some shit. It's like, so cool. Man, Tony's ripping. I remember when I worked there, Tony would walk around, when I take over, he was a <laughs> 10 year old kid. Well, uh, dude, thanks for taking so much time. What song, though? That's what I'm wondering. What are you going to throw on the jukebox? You walk in and you're like, this is the fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Four Horsemen's pretty good. Black Boys on the Corner's pretty good. Thin Lizzy. Mm. Um, you seen that Thin Lizzy documentary? I didn't. It was only showed one night and Joey had a ticket to it. And I was, yeah, I didn't. He got to see it. Him and Shrugi, I didn't get to see it. The Trooper. Mm-hmm. Dreaming for Vengeance. Motley Crew, Mo- Live Wire. That's fucking sick song. What's one of your favorite video parts, like w- songs used for a video part? Uh, to Be Real, James, Kelch. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> really well, right? That was sick. Um, Crack Raider, Mike Carroll. <laughs> that sat really well, right? Nicotina uh, Forever. Uh, Javante Stevie Wonder song. That yep. went well. It just flowed. Gino Iannucci, Guns N' Roses. It's dun, 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 so dun, 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 easy. Dun, 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 dun. Um, with his push. Yeah, Gino rips. What should we put the needle on? Dude, let's do let's do reignition. Bad brains? Yeah. All right. Dude, th- this means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Dude, thank you, Shmi. I know we were trying to do this, but Hell well, yeah. I never know what to say. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking I don't even want to say anything to offend anybody. <laughs> Everyone's offended already. You don't even have to Word. say anything. It, you know what I mean? It's like, fuck. But no, for real, thank you so much. It's, it means a lot. And, uh, you know, if you talk to Javante again, just put in a good word for me because I'm always ready for Javante if he's down. <laughs> That's the hard one, bro. <laughs> I need to be his agent for this one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dude, that was I mean, like skating, like coming up with, with Javante and kind of having Jim and Tommy like take us under their wing yeah. every day and just do that was pretty fucking cool. You know what I mean? Is that was t- and like Mickey and Arco, just how they approach shit. And was, dude, there was really, it was all there for us. You know what I mean? It was just up to the, us. The timing was really perfect like wow. i think that era was if anything like dude look how he fucking came up skating with i probably got all those dudes to come out to the east coast because i was probably the reachable one right there <laughs> well if rick could do it i'm gonna sleep at a market there i'll get this <laughs> is it is it too hard to pick uh, uh mount rushmore of san francisco skaters dude dang that's a tough one, bro. Tommy G's up there. Yeah, has to be. Who found China Banks? He's up there, right? Tommy and Arco. Julian, Coco. I don't know, dude. I'm biased. You know, fuck you. <laughs> do Do we let Daily I'm City partial. in or no? DC, DC Mike is up there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You seen Chico? He's still going. Chico's up there. Chico is surfing every morning, riding his bike 30 miles and then skating. Up, dude, Greg, I couldn't keep up. He's like, let's go skate. All right. We're two next. I'm like, bro, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> it's gnarly. It is so gnarly. Dude, whatever. I I I need to be doing that. You know what I mean? We need we all need to be out there doing this. Yeah. My new motto, dude, skateboarding. It hurts every time. Let's get a crew together and do a blue plate dinner or something sometime. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be fun. Yeah, my wife loves to go on there, dude. So Yeah, we do too. They they're they're good people, good food, and no brainer. All right, well, take care of yourself. Enjoy All right, you little, too, dude. Enjoy a little time off, dude. Thanks. All right, Schmitty. Late. Later. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.